So this is going to be problem 117 from the textbook. Okay. And this is a fluid density problem. It may not seem that way at first because we are looking at several different properties. We're talking about different fluids like gasoline and kerosene, and we're talking about uh, mixtures and stuff like that. So it may not seem like it's a fluid uh, property or fluid density problem, but it is. And you'll find that once we know how to solve it, it it'll be, things will start to make a little bit more sense. So in this problem, we have a mixture of gasoline mixed with eight cubic feet of kerosene, so that the volume of mixture, the total volume of mixture becomes 12 cubic feet. So I'm gonna to try to draw my little tank here. So I'm gonna have a little tank. And this tank will have, uh, will be full of a fluid. And what this problem statement tells us is that this tank has a total of 12 cubic feet of fluid. So the total volume, I'm gonna write this V total. The total volume of fluid in the tank is 12 cubic feet, of which eight cubic feet are kerosene. So I'm gonna say that within this total volume, the volume of kerosene is eight cubic feet. The remaining volume in the tank is the volume of gasoline. And now the question is to determine the specific weight and the specific gravity of this mixture at standard temperature and pressure. So when you read standard temperature and pressure, think of standard engineering conditions. So there is a, a note on my notes for week one that tell you what the standard engineering conditions are when it comes to pressure and when it comes to temperature. So I think we can start with that information. We have 12 cubic feet of volume of a fluid and of which eight cubic feet of those are kerosene. So my question is, if we have 12 total cubic feet of volume of, gas, uh, of the fluid and eight of those uh, cubic feet are kerosene, how many cubic feet do we have of gasoline? Yeah, that's absolutely right, right? So what we have is 12 minus 8, which is just 4 cubic feet of gasoline. So this should have been easy, right? Um, it gets a little bit complicated because we may think, well, what, what if the volume changes or the density changes? But remember that we're treating liquids as incompressible. And if we're treating liquids as incompressible, then their densities really should not change, okay? Uh, the density of the individual liquids, okay? So we know that we have four cubic feet of gasoline. Now, because they're asking us for the specific weight and the specific gravity, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first try to figure out what the specific weight of gasoline and what the specific weight of kerosene is. Now, sometimes you're not gonna have the specific weight handy, so if you can't seem to find this specific weight, my recommendation is that you try to find the density of your fluids, okay? So it's a lot easier to find density tables than it is to find specific weight tables. But either way, once you have the density, you can calculate the specific weight. So I'm gonna search it for you in the back of the book. Um, the back of the book <clears throat> has a table in Appendix A that gives you the densities of different liquids. And we find that at standard engineering conditions, the density, <coughs> sorry about that, the density of gasoline is 1.41 slugs per cubic feet. And the density of kerosene, this is again from, from <coughs> Appendix A, is 1.58 slugs per cubic feet. I had to mute myself for a second to cough because I just finished a one hour review session for statics and I guess I didn't take too much of a break in between. But we have our density values here. So if we have our density, then in theory, we should be able to find our specific weight. So I'm gonna label this as my, my first step, find the densities. 
And now with the density, we can find the specific weight. So if you have your density, how can you find the specific weight? You can, you can. Um, there's an easier way though. Apply by volume. But that's that's what gives you mess. There's another easier way. I think we're missing uh, a key relationship between density and specific weight. It's, so let uh -huh. it's density over the density of water. That is specific gravity. Oh, so uh, all of your answers are, are not wrong, right? But we're missing one key thing. So let me just give you a quick review of specific weight. So remember that specific weight is defined as the measure of a fluid's weight over its volume. And we know that weight can be calculated by multiplying mass times gravity. And if you look at this equation, we have one property of fluids that we already can identify. And what is that property? Oh, that's density. Exactly, right? Okay. So the specific weight is equal to density multiplied by gravitational acceleration. And that's an easy way to find uh, the specific weight if you have density. Now, I recommend that you keep this in mind. Keep this equation handy somewhere because different problems will provide you with different information. And depending on which fluids you're working with, sometimes you'll find your densities, sometimes you'll find your specific weights, and it's important that you know how to convert between the two. So the specific weight of gasoline is simply equal to the density of gasoline times gravitational acceleration. So I can just plug it in right here. I have 1.41 slugs per cubic feet times Gravitational acceleration in English units is 32.17, or you can just write 32.2 if you want to keep it in uh, three significant figures, okay? So I have 1.41 slugs per cubic feet times 32.2 feet per second squared. Now this may seem like some uh, weird unit system, but again, you don't have to worry because I'm gonna write a cloud around this. This is just a reminder. And here's another reminder. One pound is equal to one slug times foot per second squared. So keeping that in mind, you know that slug times foot per second squared is going to give you a pound. So the units of your specific weight should be easy to find out. So let's go ahead and figure out what that specific weight is. We have a density of 1.41 slugs per cubic feet. We multiply it by gravitational acceleration. And that gives us a specific weight of 45.4 pounds per cubic feet. I'm going to write it right here, 45.4 pounds per cubic feet. And that's how we found the density of gasoline. Similarly, we can find the density of kerosene, the, the specific weight of kerosene, by multiplying its density, rho k, times gravitational acceleration. So we do the same thing, and I'm just gonna do this myself because it's a similar process, 1.58 slugs per cubic feet, divided or multiplied by 32.2 pounds per, sorry, feet per second squared. So once again, I plug all these numbers in, 1.58 times 32.2, and I get a specific weight of 50.9 pounds per cubic feet. Good. So I found my specific weights, but that's not really what this problem is asking me to do. So this problem is asking, what is the specific weight of the mixture? And here, when we look at mixture, we may get a little confused, but we don't have to. We don't need to know advanced concepts of fluid mixtures in order to find a specific weight. Because we know that the specific weight is simply the weight of an object divided by its volume. So now, if I want to find the specific weight of the mixture,
And really, I can just apply my specific weight equation, knowing that specific weight is equal to weight over volume should be enough to help me find the specific weight. So how do I know what the specific weight of the mixture is? I need to find the weight and I need to find the volume. I know the volume of the mixture. The total volume is 12 cubic feet. But then how do I find the weight? We mentioned that specific weight was simply weight over volume. So if we take this equation and we were to solve for the weight, what we get is an expression of weight in terms of specific weight. And this is also an important equation that we're going to use a lot in this course. So we know that weight is equal to the product of specific weight times volume. So we don't have to worry about the mixture as a whole. What we can do is we can look at the individual volumes of my kerosene and gasoline in order to find the weight of those individual fluids. What I mean is that I can find the weight of gasoline by applying this equation. What does the equation say? Weight is equal to the product of specific weight. So here I'll have the specific weight of gasoline times volume. So here I'll have the volume of gasoline. So I'm going to do that. I have the specific weight of gasoline, which I calculated to be 45.4 pounds per cubic feet. And I have the volume of gasoline, which I already calculated to be 4 cubic feet. I'm going to start using my red pen to cancel units out. So notice that we have pounds per cubic feet multiplied by cubic feet. So what happens? My cubic feet cancel out, and then my expression will be simply in terms of pounds. So what do I have here? I have 45.4 multiplied by 4, and that gives me a weight of 181.6 pounds. But those are only the pounds of gasoline in the mixture. I can find the pounds of kerosene by doing the same thing. The weight of kerosene is equal to the specific weight of kerosene times the volume of kerosene in the mixture. The specific weight of kerosene was calculated to be 50.9 pounds per cubic feet. The volume of kerosene was given to us to be 8 cubic feet. And so the total weight becomes 50.9 times 8, that is 407.2 pounds. So why do I need these individual weights? Notice that the weight of my mixture should be equal to the sum of the weights of the individual fluids. We're going to learn about this in the future with a law of conservation. But essentially what this tells us is that the weight of the mixture, so I'm going to call it the total weight, is equal to the weight of gasoline in the mixture plus the weight of kerosene in the mixture. I know that my gasoline weighs 181.6 pounds. I know that my kerosene weighs 407.2 pounds. So I just add them up and I get a total weight of 500 and 88.8 .8 pounds. And that is the total weight of the mixture. Now, I want you to be a little bit careful here because notice that I'm plugging all my numbers with three significant figures. So I'm already introducing some sort of rounding error. I don't think my rounding error is that big. It will definitely be in the order of less than half a pound. But if you do have the luxury of using a calculator, Try not to round your numbers until the very end. If you have no choice, then that's okay, because my error will be close enough to my final answer that I can still find it with confidence, okay? So I want to make sure I made a note about uh, the dangers of rounding errors. Now that I have the total weight of my mixture, I can find the specific weight of that mixture. 
I'm going to call it total specific weight. That's not a, an accurate name, but I'll call it that. By saying that the specific weight is equal to the total weight divided by the total volume. So I have a weight of 588.8 pounds right here. And I'm going to have a total volume, which is given of 12 feet. So now if I divide 588 over 12 feet, I get a specific weight of 49.1 pounds per cubic feet. Oh, I forgot to put my cubic foot here, my volume. Okay. So that is the specific weight of the mixture, 49.1 pounds per cubic feet. The second question is an easier question. It asks me for the specific gravity. Now, if I have specific weight, then specific gravity is not really a problem because we know the specific gravity is equal to the ratio of the specific weight of a fluid over the specific weight of water under standard engineering conditions. So my specific water will be 49.1 pounds per cubic feet divided by the specific weight of water under standard engineering conditions, which is 62.4 pounds per cubic feet. Now, I didn't have to look this number up because I use it so much that I have it memorized. And so will you when you finish this class. You're going to use this number so much that you're going to have it memorized if you haven't memorized it already. So we have 49.1 divided by 62.4, and that gives me a specific gravity of 0 0.786. I'd like to be consistent with my significant figure. So if I'm using three sig figs here, I'm going to use three sig figs here. So that is how you solve problem 117. I forgot who had a question with it, um, but that's essentially a walkthrough of the solution. So are there any questions with this problem, problem 1-17? Good. If there are no questions, then let's move on.